and it's headphones nail. What's up guys, welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews, I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my latest episode of reviews and updates and things I've been up to. So it's going to be a little bit shorter of an episode, but I did want to get a review out for um, everything that I've been up to. Um, I'm still pushing Fallout out, the, my viewing of Fallout out another week because I wanted to watch something else first instead. Um, just one of those inklings that I felt like watching, so I watched that. Um, but now that um, X-Men 97 Season 1 is dead, I'll have more time to get caught up on Fallout. So with that being said, this week's cover image was generated in Google's image effects with the prompt of Stargate theme park space. So that'll all make sense in a little bit once I get to all of those uh, reviews. But also the image effects part I'll mention or I'll talk about a little bit more in this week's Android quick tip because I did all of that on my Android device. So with that being said, I had a chance to watch X-Men 97 season 1 finale Tolerance is Extinction part 3. So we have the uh, big showdown between the technolo technological guy uh, Professor X, the X-Men, and all of that. We still have Professor X and Magneto in Magneto's mind trying to f repair the Earth and all of that stuff. So um, overall, a very good and dramatic episode. We still have a lot of the uh, charm of all the X-Men, the emotion that goes with it. it. A lot of the emotion was focused more now on uh, Professor X and Magneto, which was nice. Uh, their relationship, their strifes, um, their points of view, and all of that stuff, which led to a very good season finale in that um, as part of the um, stuff that they were doing with repairing the Earth, they all get sent back in time. So um, Professor X and Magneto, and now I'm drawing a blank on who got sent where, but one set got... Um, one group got sent to one place and then um, another group got sent to ancient Egypt during the time of um, Apocalypse. So Al Sabanur, the one move, I think it was, yeah, I think it was X Men Apocalypse, the one, the film in the reboot franchise. So it's going to be interesting to see how that's going to play out. And that actually does, interestingly enough, set up a another season for X Men 97, which now that I think about it, I wonder if that's supposed to be a tie in to one of the other story arcs for the original X-Men series, um, but I'll probably take a look at that when I have some time, but um, if this was its own season, it would be an interesting setup for season two to see how all the X-Men get back to their present time um, after the events of fighting that technological guy, so definitely worth a watch. I recommend checking it out. Um, they rounded it out very, very nicely. All the stuff that happened uh, pulled together very nicely. Now, as far as the show that I wanted to watch and that I ended up watching in place of Fallout was Stargate SG-1 Seasons 9 and 10. So, um, after watching Stargate Arc of Truth a couple of weeks ago, I kind of wanted to rewatch the two seasons with the Ori and how all of that went. And overall, it was a very, it's a very good set of two seasons. It's actually more concise than some of the other story arcs just because they don't have a lot of the, they have a lot of episodes, but not a lot of the filler episodes. They do have a couple of them, but um, a lot of it is focused on either directly dealing with the Ori or what the Ori are up to or, you know, events relating to what the Ori are up to and, you know, filing, finding Merlin's weapon, um, dealing with Adria, her rise, and all of that stuff, and um, how they're going to all defeat the Ori. So overall, a good set of two seasons to the point where it actually feels like they kept mentioning and playing up the part about how the Ancients are not going to help anyone in the galaxy so they don't have to introduce them and deal with them or anything like that. But it would have been one of those things that would have been interesting if they extended the Ori story arc by a season and presented us with the Ancients' point of view. So deal with them on the 
their higher plane of existence. So kind of like how we saw the Ori city with the flames and all that, kind of see um, how the ancients are dealing with it. Um, do they have their own committees? Are their own, their, are they their own forms of energy or whatever? Or is it only just like that one cafe that Daniel gets stuck in that um, they're all there and they're all doing their own forms of enlightenment and dealing with whatever they want to deal with on their own and not taking place of, in any galactic events because they're already ascended so they only want to deal with themselves and they'll deal with anyone who tries to share their power with the human realm i guess so one of those things where um it's it would have been interesting if they expanded it by one season and dealt a little bit more with the ancients or given you know daniel the ability to meet with the ancients spend some time going back to him being ascended or even when he's in the cafe actually letting him ascend and showing us what's happening on the ancient side like show us what he did to um have him and then kick him out uh what he learned and all of that stuff just to see that from a different point of view so even if they did like a special one-off season of you know stargate as she won season 11 um to deal with all that because i know with the current um tv shows and movies it's all rounded out very nicely but it would have been it's one of those things where i do kind of want to see the thing something from the point of view of the ancients or even go back in time to when the four races were making their um that are making their connections and um becoming united where we see that kind of those deals being made all the um you know ups and downs and negotiations creating the um like the various places where they store their knowledge and all of that stuff and um kind of show all of that stuff kind of a retrospective on that as something we've never seen before in the stargate universe so with that being said, for this week's Android Quick Tip, so we did have Google I.O. this year and its focus was a lot on AI. So um, a lot of st or stuff related to, you know, Google Photos and Gmail and uh, Gemini and all of that stuff. But the one thing that stood out to me was the Google AI Test Kitchen, which has three features that are of particular note. So the first one is something that you may have seen. Um, image FX is one of those image generation things where you can put in a prompt and create an image. So that's where this week's image came from. So I, the prompt I mentioned at the top of the episode um, is what it came up with. So um, I'm going to give it another, another shot. But at the moment, I like the Google Gemini creation tool a little bit better because it's more natural language. You can type in a sentence like generate an image of something and it'll generate it whereas image fx is more keyword based it looks like so um something to keep in mind there um music fx was a little bit easier on that note with the keywords so this week's background music except for the intro was created in music fx with the same prompt so it, you can create a neat audio file of 30 seconds up to 70 seconds to use as backing for your own music. So if you're, you know, you want to create some beats or some backing audio and stuff like that, then music effects is one of those things to um, definitely try out. So I am going to try that out for the next couple of weeks just to see how it goes and use what it comes up with as a means to um, share that. And then the final thing, final piece of the test kitchen is video FX where much like the same thing you can put in a prompt of different um words and stuff and it'll create a video of um whatever you create the prompt for so i'll have a link in the show notes to um that particular or to the link because it looks like it's still waitlist only they haven't rolled it out for everybody but it's one of those things where once um the video is created i kind of want to play with it see if i can create a video of different lengths or how I can use it for in for example something like the YouTube video so use this AI generated video um, and make that like a more visual version of the podcast rather than with just a static image but all in all it does look very intriguing and interesting as tools to supplement what you know for in my case do what you do with podcasting or if you want to just have random video or picture generation then you can use it for that. 
Now, as far as the rest of the episode, so as far as Knights of the Old Republic 2, I'm currently on Nar Shada. As of this recording, I'm either um, just barely finishing or um, I've, I'm about to finish the um, level. So depending on where you hear it, because I think as of this recording, I'm at the point of the Jack Jack Tar Cantina. So probably my least favorite part of this particular level next to... If you're not using the every one is a Jedi mod then the, the, I think I dislike the Jack Jack Tar mostly because you have to keep your breath power going and then you have to go to the back and to the back area the whole um, Hanhar Mira thing and then you have to make your way back out again so it was just a weird fight sequence that's more of tediousness than anything else and my dislike of that is only the closest dislike elsewhere on this planet that I have is converting Atten to a Jedi. So if you're playing the game with a stocking game or with the release content mod, then you have to have enough influence with Atten and then you have to be able to persuade him that or like unlock his mind and that Jedi are okay and good and then convert him into a Jedi. So that whole thing is a pain. So um that's the one thing I've always like disliked about um the Sith Lords is that the idea of converting people to Jedi was a good thing. But it was too much of a pain to do and I never really liked that. So there like there were times when I'd follow the same path twice or I thought I was following the same path twice and one would work and one time would not. So that was always um, super annoying. So um, with that being said, our, I, I mentioned I think when I started the gameplay that I'm using the everyone is a Jedi mod. So Adden, the Handmaiden, um, Beodur and every, anyone else in the party who's not a Jedi but can be converted to one starts as a Jedi automatically so I can skip over all of that conversation but um, after Nar Shada, I think the plan is to go to Dantooine so that or maybe um, Korriban I haven't quite decided I think I'll wait for Korriban till a little bit later in the game maybe after um, Dantooine, I guess, because I think it flows better when you have that um, interaction with the Sith Lord guy, um, Sion, a little bit closer to when you land on um, Malachor. So, and it's also a little bit of a difficult fight scene with him. So, if you have a higher level character with a better health, it's easier to get past him and move on from there. So, um, and I think the stuff in the Shylerak cave um, makes a little bit more sense too a little bit later. So I'll probably wait for that till after um, Dantooine or after um, Onderon and Duxen. As far as the weekly Roller Coaster Tycoon gameplay, um, I had a chance to play or I replayed Dynamite Dunes in the Graphite group. And overall, it was a good, um, fun time. It was still a little bit of a weird map just because of all that big hill that you have to deal with so um, if you adjust what you're able to spend your research time on once you get the log ride I think that's the best ride of all the water rides to use um, building an extra um, train ride is good just to make sure it's not too scary so you have to that's one of those things in the game is that it feels like some of the roller coasters like having a scary one is good but not too scary is better so you have to find that good balance of uh, scary and not scary um, but um, as long as you have a log ride as a water ride you're gonna have guaranteed income there and then as far as the roller coaster goes don't make it too you know too big of a drop or too small of a drop or anything like that so um, but overall, it's a good map, so I'm going to continue the gameplay with the next level in the Graphite group and see how that goes. But that is all for um, this particular episode, so if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on this post on any of the social media sites, which are linked on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. All the gameplay episodes are up on YouTube at youtube.com slash patelin01. And of course, if you want early access to the podcast, along with a link to the video version, you can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash patelin01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.